The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. What, what I'm teaching is, is the works of the flesh, the, the six deadly seas. Six is the number of flesh. The six deadly seas, all of a sudden, uh, there's, there's a conviction if you do it, but there's also an absence of the want to. There's no comparing yourself with other people, no competing, no coveting, wishing I had something. Uh, all of those things are, are, are the flesh pulling you out from that relationship. Uh, of the new creation, uh, concealing stuff, complaining, come on, that's, that's the flesh, and control, I like that one, mm. control, it was like when the Lord uh, dealt with me on it, I was in Publix, and something that I would have passed off as a comment, a mental comment, I got convicted of, that's a healthy sign that God's doing something, when things that you normally would have overlooked, and I could still remember that uh, I was looking at uh, the, the various levels of Christianity and, and from a historical point of view, many of the greats entered into a depth of Jesus uh, after they'd been saved many, 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 many years. And the one that, that really intrigued me was the fact that they enter into a fully functioning, operating as kings and priests unto the Lord. You know, uh, Romans 5.17 says that we should be reign in this life as kings and priests. But a priest is totally sold out to other people, or you're not a priest. And a king, you don't reign in, as a king unless the king himself, Melchizedek, that's the order we're in now, Jesus himself, the king of kings, is living through you. So there's a subordination that has great depth. So anyway, I'm walking through the public's parking lot, and I, I'm, I'm commenting in my head on all those people that leave their carts any old place. They empty their groceries, and then just, they don't care if it runs into a car next to them or whatever. And I thought it was just a comment, and I'm doing it in my head. You know, and I'm walking in, I'm going, oh, gee. And, and God says, who made you king of public's parking lot? I was, <laughs> I was shocked. What he was showing me was jurisdiction, that we complain about stuff that has nothing to do with us. And he's saying, you want to move into that level of being kings and priests unto the Lord? Then you're basically, you're going to have to understand jurisdiction. You're going to have to understand when something's none of your business that you thought was just a mild opinion and basically, there was, there's a holy reverence now uh, that, that's come upon us, and I, I just know it's there. It's like now, if you do mess up, it, the conviction is like a donkey kicking you in the gut. And so I want that for everybody. I want you to get kicked in the gut like a donkey. <laughs> but so much of it is, is, it's like the light is being turned up, but when the light's turning up, you're not being worse. You're actually seeing stuff that you normally wouldn't have dealt with. And I think that's healthy for all of us, isn't it? To start seeing stuff that you normally would dealt with. But the, the, the beauty of it is, is it seems to be that there is a divine enablement that helps you and prevents you from yielding to temptation in thought, word, or deed. And that's the keeping power of God. So there's the, there's the uh, negative side of the cross where you die to the flesh, but there's a resurrection side of his divine enablement in there to make you have a want to, not a have to, a want to. And it's an awareness that he's in there willing and working according to his good pleasure. And his will is his pleasure, not drudgery. There's always pleasure in his will. But uh, Jennifer, what have you noticed? Since we're, 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 I realize that we're going by evidence of an internal change because you know I've been in the church for 40 some years I've heard people say we've gone to a new level but there's never any tangible indication of that level I'm saying if we go to another level I want fruit 
I want proof. I don't want theory. Show me, you know. How do you know that you've moved to another level? How do you know you've moved to another level, Jennifer? I know you have. Well, for one thing, things that didn't used to bother me or I would just not pay attention to just things that used to bother that you. used to bother me. Um, well, no, things that I did that used to not bother me. Oh, okay. Like, you know, little annoyances, that kind of thing. Well, for one, things aren't bothering me like they used to, but it is like walking in a greater light. So you're seeing things through his eyes and not yours, because we excuse ourselves. You know, even say we're only human. Well, actually we're saying we're only subhuman if we're less than what God created us to be. Jesus was perfectly right. human. Right. He was the example of the perfect man walking, being totally under the control of the Holy Spirit. He didn't do his own thing, and he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I only, of myself, I can do nothing. I only say what I hear my Father say. I only do what I see my Father do. And this is an area, some of you, if you're new here, you don't know what on earth we're talking about. So... Grab some pamphlets on the way out. Right, <laughs> right. Actually, this is a, I've known about what is happening here for 30 years, and I've studied it, and I've known the experience of living, of Christ living his life through you was possible, but suddenly God has brought it into our experience, and this is a new move of God, and this is a holiness movement. Mm -hmm. And let me explain, first of all, that this is what John Wesley taught. This is what the Second Great Awakening was all about when Charles Finney rediscovered John Wesley. And people began moving into the experience of knowing Christ as their life. And it's so liberating. It's so freeing. It is, it's wonderful. It's what Christianity is supposed to be. So... Um, just wanted, to, I mean, I've never in my life heard of more heresies that are going on in the church than are going on right now. And I didn't think people could invent any new ones, but I swear I think there's some new ones out there. And so we want to always make sure we give the theology of Orthodox Christianity because Jesus has been building his church for 2,000 years. And if something springs up that hasn't been taught by a consensus of the brethren over the past 2,000 years, chances are that somebody's gotten off into a heresy on that. And by the way, the, the hyper-grace movement, where it's okay if you sin, Jesus understands it was all taken care of at your initial conversion experience, that is the old heresy uh, of antinomianism. I mean, that is not a new one. The grace message is Jesus bringing many sons unto glory, bringing us to full stature, causing us to grow up spiritually, causing us to move into a Melchizedek priesthood, causing us to live holy because Christ in us is holy. And God himself said, be holy for I'm holy. And I don't know about you, but I knew I couldn't be holy. And that's true because Jesus has, in us has been made unto us sanctification or holiness. So as he lives his holy life through us, then we can actually cooperate with what the scripture tells us to do. Mm -hmm. oh, I got my own microphone. Oh, you I do? Need, I don't need your... But the interesting is everything you're saying and everything we're saying, I could have taught this theoretically 42 years ago. It's just that what do you do when you enter into a level of the reality of what you taught? You realize you could be teaching this from a much different level. Right. And I want that for everyone. I want everyone to pursue, to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of God. And what's interesting is I look backwards 
on teachings and it didn't negate anything that I've taught prior to this, but it clearly has taken it to a higher level. I taught everything for 42 years at the level of my experience. You interpret at the level of your experience. I'm saying, let's move on in our experience and hunger after God for deeper, richer experience in Him and then see how you see things. Because the, the scriptures I'm seeing now, I, I feel like I taught probably 30 years ago on 1 John, the child, the young man, and the father. And probably thought I was at the father 30 years ago. I think I just crossed from, I speak to you little children, I speak to you, young men is actually adolescent. I feel like I just moved into the adolescent stage. And that everything we taught was baby food, even though the church needs it. Compared to what's coming. Compared to what's coming and what's on the horizon and what has already begun. And it's begun first with the cleansing of the house, this house, this, with holiness first. The fear of the Lord has to be returned back into your personal lives before you're going to see more God. This is not a, a lay hands on you and you get it. This is going to be, I repent and I hunger after, thirst after God and I want to be filled and I'm holding my heart open and I'm going for this and I'm going for broke. I'm not going to be satisfied till, till I meet Him in a clear and more distinct way. And I'm a genuine work of the cross. But I saw young men, and the funny thing is, is I actually prophesied it without knowing two months ago. I put the little chart on the wall. I'm, this is the second or third time I'm saying this, but I'm still amazed by it. How, 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 how God puts His how Word in us. How to make the Word become flesh. How you let the Word sink in. You feed instead of read. You drink instead of think. And then eventually that Word becomes the living Word and that, that ink on a page becomes the living Word. The living Word is Jesus, not just ink on a page. And that becomes your value system. It's, it's a part, you become a partaker of that divine nature. And four weeks ago, or more, six weeks ago maybe, yeah, it must have been at least six weeks. Six weeks ago, I just says, when I put that chart up, and God is speaking, and He spoke to me right when I was standing there. He said, I'm going to come to my church as the living word, as their value system. No matter how much word you know, I'm going to visit them as the living word. I, He Himself, the word, will be the, and so then I looked at the child, the young man, and the fathers, thinking I was already at the father stage. And I looked at that and I went, the child knows their sins are forgiven. That's the first level. The first level. We've taught forgiveness to a church that really didn't know how to do it, to be honest with you. And we were in well-taught churches. But they didn't know how to forgive from the heart. They were trying to forgive from the head and wondering why oh, it was such a struggle. Forgiveness is instant. You shouldn't... And Forgiveness, you are the most forgiven people on the face of the earth. You should be as natural as breathing, spiritually naturally a forgiver. It should flow out of you effortlessly. If it doesn't flow out of you effortlessly, you're still a child. You're still carnal. The Corinthians had all the gifts, but they were the most childish of all people. Forgiveness is Christ the forgiver in you. It's not even something you do, it's something you allow Him to do. He's the only one that can forgive sin. You can't forgive. So forgiveness is, flows as a lifestyle. And, and God's saying, enough's enough. That's available. Now start going to teach them how to be an adolescent. I speak to you, young men, because the Word of God abides in you. Who, what Word of God? The living Word of God abides in you. It's a replaced life. It's simply, it's not ink on a page, but it's Jesus in me that abides. And I've overcome the wicked one. Because when he died, I died. When he was raised, I was raised. This is not new theology. This is new experience of that theology. And all of a sudden, I'm saying, it's a replaced life to where it's like he's in me and he's living through me and temptation to sin is when it happens it's like that's out there trying to pull me out there i have desires and appetites they rise up but it's something out there that's pulling no i am not going to live independent of that new creation i'm 
They that are joined to the Lord are one spirit with Him, and the enemy is trying in the replaced life or as an adolescent, if the Word of God is really abiding in you strong, you've overcome the wicked one, you're walking in a level of victory that you've not known before. And I, I would have thought I, loved, I walked in a lot of victory. Let me give just briefly, so if, those, if you haven't heard any of this teaching, let me just give you a little overview. We were created by God to not be independent from a spirit dwelling in us. Unlike animals that don't, they have a soul, mind, will, and emotions, but they don't have a spirit. We were created by God in His image to be filled with His spirit. When Adam sinned, Satan took all of humanity that was meant for God's spirit and because of Adam's sin, we inherited from Adam a sin spirit. And it infected the whole world. The whole world lies under the sway of the evil one. And when Jesus died to rescue us, to get back God's stolen property, Jesus came not to just give us forgiveness of sins through the blood. He took us to the cross so when he died, we died. Now we know that the body without a spirit is dead. So at that point, we were separated from that old spirit. When Christ was raised, we were raised together with him with a new spirit, a new man, a new creation in us. And so even... this is just recognizing that Jesus already took care of it. And, the replacing of that spirit. And even believing that, that was my theology. But my experience was more like there was a good me and a bad me fighting on the inside. But that's if impossible. That's, we can't have impossible. two spirits in us. We can just be deceived by the enemy to think that if it has been taken If that's care your experience, of. let me tell you, that can change. You need to reckon yourself dead. Well, the old time Pentecostals would reckon themselves dead mentally. Well, I just reckon they were reckoning themselves dead all the time. Every time they blew it, they reckoned themselves dead. This was a, I reckon that once and for all dead. That this and is I'm true. Hungry, that this is true. You start with believing that it's true theologically, but then you wait for the experience of knowing that that old man was crucified. That's a replaced life. That you know I really knew this happened. in theory for 42 years, but I, I'm telling you, when you experience it, all of a sudden, it's like, I think I didn't know what I thought I knew. Or somehow you had a theology for one thing, but you were living something else. That's when the lights turned on. That's what's going to happen during an awakening. I don't care how biblically literate you are. I don't care what your walk with the Lord is like. When, when God suddenly comes to His church, you're going to see stuff that you never saw before. And the Scriptures are going to come alive, and they're going to be deeper than you ever thought. And in the beginning stage, or I speak to you little children because your sins are forgiven. Quite frankly, most of the Christianity, if you be real honest, it's about you. What My God can blessings, do for me. what God can do for me, what's in it for me. And there's a healthy part to that. But that can't be your total consciousness. You were blessed to be a blessing. The second, the second level is still about you. For personal it's, victory. It's personal victory over the devil. And the, the living word is abiding in. And the abundant life is beginning to do. But that's still all about you. That's still adolescent. And most of the church isn't even at stage one where they know how to forgive properly. Or even want to. They're forgiven, but they're not. They're forgiven, well, but they're not reciprocating by growing and maturing by walking a forgiveness lifestyle that is automatic. And that can be taught, and we teach that. And it's in our modules, it's in all of our training. But this next level is how to respond to temptation after you know that you've been set free from... Through a replaced life. Through a replaced life is the only thing we can call it. And we have a booklet and a pamphlet on that too. This is not new theology. This is John Wesley, mm -hmm. Finney, many of the greats. Finney, after he won a million people to the Lord, was dissatisfied with his Christian walk. Is there anybody out there that's dissatisfied with your Christian walk? You're doing the best you can, but you really feel like something's, something's not that great. And a lot of times you fool yourself thinking it's great until the light turns on. 
and the light turns on, all of a sudden, I'm not so great. <laughs> and that's a good thing. We don't have to be. We don't have to be. We weren't Only meant God to be. is good. You weren't meant to live the Christian life. You were meant to let him live the life through you. Does that make sense? Yeah. It is God who is at work to will and to perform. All right. So I don't know if that did anything. We're turning over to Jason. And we're going to let him explain everything that you need to know. Because we can't even explain it yet. We're still oh. enjoying the experience. Oh, by the way, last, last time I talked and I had a little chart on the first level, the forgiven life, the second level, the replaced life, and the third level, what, which it will be the awakening, will get underway in power when he takes us to that third level. Um, but this explains child, young man, and father, and the theology in a very brief form, and they are available or, back there at the book table. Or Romans 6, 7, and 8. That's really what it is. Mm -hmm. Or, as many of the more Bible study scholarly type people, they would call it justification, sanctification, sanctification and glorification. But nobody knows what those but words nobody's mean anymore. Yeah, so, so. <laughs> so we thought we'd do for, forgiven, replaced, and empowered. Okay, Jason, tell us what you know. Tell us who you know. Yeah, that's better. Oh, thank you, Lord. This is a really crazy time, and I love it. It's, it, it was a very difficult week for, for my, my household, but uh, I think we're at a, at a, at a new level of, of uh, territory taken. We have, a, we have new enemies <laughs> we have to figure out how to, how to work through. But what's fascinating, it's still, it's still the same it's still the same, it's still the same scenario. Is It's all self. It's all dealing with self. It's all letting self burn up, you know. Um, anything that, that, you know, tweaks you or, or pushes your buttons, um, you're obviously wrong because you shouldn't have buttons to begin with. No, I mean, I'm serious. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that to convict anybody or anything like that either because... Um, we had buttons, whether they're placed by our parents or <laughs> whoever. <laughs> they they don't they're not supposed to be there. Something gets your goat. You're the one that had it. So I had to I have to just share a little bit. Um, the scripture that that the Lord. Uh, Constantly has me in in the during this time. Um, of, I, I call it it's, it's personal revival for me. It's this is like incredible. But the scripture that God has me in is is uh, consistently almost every morning when I when I wake up I still hear it is is that Psalm thirty four just like the song we sang. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And blessed are those who hide in Him. And I think what's really what's really interesting about it uh, for me is that this is this is like a, what's coming and what the Lord wants for us is um, not just the, the dealing with the self and, and all that. It's because that's all preparation for what's coming, and and what's coming I believe is basically uh, a love movement. <laughs> it's it's a it's a in it's an inward working and then an outward flowing and it's it's going to be like a massive love movement and i'm not talking hippie days or anything like that don't don't go there but i'm but i'm saying it's it's the showing of christ's love and his goodness um, through us and eventually when when you get to the, the that that third level it's that's all they're going to see and and that's my prayer oh my god for me you know it's it's not just working through us, but it is becoming. And it's not, it's not like we're becoming God, but it's, it's, we're becoming everything that he has called us to be and allowing him and getting us out of the way and allowing him to be shown to everybody around us, to the people that need to see, the people that need hope. We all need hope. A lot of times in our lives, there's, there's different things that happen in, in this world that is run by the 
the God of this world. And so we have sicknesses, we have diseases, we have, you know, there's, there's the divorce and there's things that are very painful that we go through. But his promise to us is that he has overcome and he is already in us. So it's kind of like we just kind of have to believe that. It's not, it's not a wimpy belief either. It has to be really strong. It's, it's, a, it's a faith thing. He was speaking to me a lot about faith this week. And I, and I, and I think that most of the, I, I want to say most of us, faith is, is, is something that's kind of a magical, mystical, we don't know exactly what it is. And if we experience it, we kind of know, but then we can't figure out how to explain it. So that was one of my things that I was, I was asking the Lord about after I heard a, a, a teaching about how to, um, it was a teaching about healing your faith. And, I, and I, at first I, I was like, oh, that's ludicrous. I never heard of that before. Why, why you either believe or you don't. And see how childish I was. So they see either black or white. And I came to understand when I said, Lord, teach me that because I don't know it. And like the very next day, he was like, here's some scriptures. And this is what I want you to learn. And this is what I'm going to teach you. And so ever since then, it's been several weeks now. It's like he's, he's growing and, and unfolding some things about faith. Um, and I don't, I'm not saying that I'm, I'm all the way, you know, I have arrived at this awesome knowledge about faith or anything like that. But what he did share with me, I would, I would see if I could share it with you. Um, <clears throat> Everybody knows the scripture in, I think it's in James, about wisdom. The wis wisdom is... At the beginning of, of the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. In James, it says that the wisdom from above is first pure. I think part of part of what the way that the that the devil kind of steals our faith or damages our faith, so to speak, that we do need it healed up is that we believe in the, the wisdom too much of the world, the wisdom that's below, that's earthly and sensual. We take things for granted as fact and figures and things that, you know, different processes through life that we, we gather information here and there and we say, well, that's just fact. And this, is, this was passed down from my generation to generation or this was this and that and, you know, that's the wisdom of the world, yo, you know? I was going to say, yo. That's the wisdom of the world, yo. yo. <laughs> I, I am not, I'm not that person. But, um, <laughs> but the thing is, is when we're, we're in, in, in Colossians 3, it tells us that, that we are dead and we are hid in him. Our lives are hid in him. And... So many times what happens is, is the wisdom of the world tends to actually pull us out from that hiding place. And the, the, every, every single thing that the enemy has ever done, ever will do or try to do against the, the body of Christ is to pull you out from that, that hiding place. Because while you're in that hiding place, you're untouchable. He can't see you even. He doesn't understand. And so every single thing, every, everything that he comes at you with, whether it's earthly wisdom, facts and figures. You know, somebody says that you only have three months to live, stuff like that. I mean, your parents were alcoholics, you're a child of alcoholics, so you're going to have these certain tendencies. You know, all of that stuff that you could think, you could read, you could, you could you'd read volumes of books and learn all these things that are constantly going to pull away from that hiding place. What do I mean is, is it's going to be pulling away from your belief in God. It constantly, it's a constant force that he tries to do against us. That's how he works. What we want to try to, what we want to attempt to do, especially while we're, 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 we have the, the grace, you know, it's like seek God while he could be found. 
right now, it's, it's, it's adamant that you seek God because he can be found right now. He has given a, 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 a super special grace in preparation for what he's going to be about to be doing. Yeah. And so seek him, desire him. If you don't desire, if you don't seek, ask at least, ask for him to help you do it. Amen. At the very least, because he will be faithful. Lord, I don't have that rich desire that I really want. You know, it's hard for me to sit down and read the Bible or it's hard, you know. Be honest, be just point blank, Lord, I don't have it. I don't, I don't got it. Stir it up in me, Father. You know, bring back the remembrance of those things. Bring back, even if it was like your salvation experience was the last thing that, was, that you felt like God actually was there with you. Bring it back to remembrance, Lord. Stir me up. I desire you, and he will meet you there. It might not be today. It might not be tomorrow. It could be instant. But if you remain open, the door to our heart is our will, right? When we remain open, we have hope. And the substance of that hope is, is faith. What the Lord was speaking to me about faith, coming back to that, was... Picture, I can't really paint a picture of something spiritual when you can't see it tangibly. But what, what he was speaking to me was, you think of it as, it is substance. It's, the Bible says it's the substance of what's hoped for, the evidence. It's evidence and substance of what's not seen with your physical eyes. We have natural faith, and even our natural faith needs exercised. Natural faith is I see a chair, and I'm going to go sit in it, and I know that chair is going to hold me up. So you do. Your faith gets built the first time you go and sit in that chair. So you already knew it would hold you up. You, at least that's what you believed. But once you sit in it, your, faith is, your, your natural faith is just increased. We have to do the exact same thing in the Spirit. And so then I ask the Lord, well... <laughs> Give me a clue. You know, give me a clue. I don't, I don't quite understand how you, we, all, we base that all on, sens on sensory perception. That something is physically there. When we, we get a lot of times we get things confused. Hope is not faith. Prayer for something is not necessarily faith. It could be faith-based prayer. But hoping is not faith. Faith is the, the substance of what was hoped for. It's already in existence in the spirit realm. What we need to do and be able to do is see that in the spirit. And then pull it from the spirit to the natural realm. That's bringing heaven to earth. What's really neat is what we always, we always consider in our ministry, especially like my dad and how we, we talk about, you know, different things that happen with people and, and, and how, to, how to get them into a place of maturity and bring them up as far as the congregation and people, even in, le in leaders, is that we try to pull the gold. It doesn't matter. I mean, if you, a gold miner sees lots of dirt, you know. They see lots of dirt, but, but we, we are determined to pull the gold out of people. And to bring people into maturity, it's our responsibility as as, past, as a pastoral team. And the thing is, is I never saw it quite before. But that gold not only is it, it's you know, see the Jesus in people, see the gold in people, you know, all that stuff. It's faith. It's the substance that already exists in the spirit that we all have, and we we want to bring it forth. And so what, what's so incredible about that is it is bringing heaven to earth. It's just like the disciples did. They went and they, they, they brought heaven to earth in the natural realm. In, by faith, they saw this person healed. So they prayed for them and they were healed. The thing is, is it's not that they saw it with their natural eyes. We have to learn how to be more sensitive in the spirit. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to move in us so that we don't even 
fathom being taken away from that safety. We can't fathom being out from underneath that covering. We can't, we can't, we can't afford to, to do this anymore. You know, every time, I mean, especially right now, it's like every time you feel there's something drawing you away, and, and that's the scripture says, you're all drawn away, man is drawn away by the, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. They're drawn away. It means it, it's the same thing. It's, it's the enemy pulling you out of that place of safety. But you have to willingly go. But if we willingly do not want to, there's such a... When, once you get through like the first and second experience of, of what's going on now, it's kind of like you so don't, you so don't want to do anything wrong because it's so good to be where you're at. That it's like non, it becomes nonsense to to want anything else. If something tweaks you a little bit, and you're like, "Oh dear Lord, that person just cut out in front of me," and and you feel a little bit of anger, and and you and you and you feel so much conviction, it's like, "Oh, I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave this place, and I don't want you to leave me, and I don't want you to. I don't want you to be grieved." With the, with the things that the Lord was speaking to me about faith is that doubt in whatever form grieves the Holy Spirit. We can't change his word because his word is life. It fills us from head to toe. His word is living. It's a person. We can't afford to grieve that person. It says, do not grieve, don't quench the Holy Spirit. But when you look at the scriptures and you look at how Jesus approached the disciples even, oh, ye of little faith, oh, ye of no faith, oh, you, know, you guys are rotten at this. <laughs> how long must I stay here before you believe and you can do these things? He was, he was m moved more when 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 he stood before Lazarus Lazarus tomb that the people around him didn't believe that he wept he was moved more in the scriptures by people's unbelief and then there and he was also moved he was moved greatly when the people did believe and had great faith those two things because when you look at the, the, just those two things, and you say, when was, when was he most grieved with the believers? And when was he most, you know, happy with the believers? It was just those two things. It was unbelief and belief. It was faith. It was, it was no faith or great faith. And, and, and it was just like, so then I, I said, you know, the opposite, obviously, uh, is doubt. Doubt that he isn't who he says he was. The scriptures, you can't doubt. But when I felt, when I, when I felt that, you know, not just the, the things that are happening on the outside, but when, when he hit me on that doubt, I was like, wow, I don't want to grieve you. I don't want to lose this relationship and this, this quality. You know, forgive me, search me for any doubt, anything that you would consider doubt that I don't even think or wouldn't even consider because I think when I think I'm not doubting, I believe every single word in the scriptures. Sure. <laughs> until he starts, when, until you say, show me, Lord, you know, where, I, where my unbelief is. And, 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 and that's the answer, you know, it's helped me with my unbelief because he's there to do it. Uh, so I'm in the process of that. And it is um, not an easy process, but I, I want to do it so badly. And I want to be able to have that part of my life change so deeply so that I could be able to minister love to people without anything in the way without any doubt that God's not going to come through. 
there's so many different teachings even that just don't make any sense if you really think about it and you compare it to what the Word of God says. There's teachings that say, you know, people that say things and teach things like um, you're sick because you got such and such in you or, or, he's, or God's trying to teach you a lesson. Are you serious? No, I mean, really, we think these things sometimes, even in our, of ourselves, when we don't even question it. Like God is putting you in this position for a reason. You're sick and you're dying for a reason. Now, there's a different, there's an attitude that you can change while you're in that particular situation, if you, you know, as well as welcoming the Holy Spirit and, and, and the healing power to, to flow through you. Jesus is in you and he's a healer. But in the process, though, you're, you got, just make sure you check your attitudes to make sure that your attitudes are right before God. Um, but, but in, I mean, in reality, I mean, let me think. I think it's Psalm 103 that I was reading. But he, but he basic, he, he basically says that he will, he, he cleanses all your sins and he heals all your diseases. He didn't say some. And it's in the written word. And the written word is the word of God. And it's a living word and it's a person. And he's not a man that he should lie. You know, we get these little boxes and they, and, you know, of healing scriptures and we quote them and, you know, you can put them up on your refrigerator or on your mirror in, in, the, in the bathroom. And, and so that you have them all always before you, there's nothing wrong with that. And that's awesome. But when you, when you get the living word, then the relationship that, that, that the author of those words is alive in you, it makes, it makes a 110% difference. And that's where we want everybody to be, is that we, we, the importance of the, the relationship and the presence of God in your life is so much more than just your Bible. You know, and people have that little cliche that says, uh, you know, uh, Christian, uh, being a Christian isn't just a, a, a religion, it's a relationship. And it's so true, and it sounds like it's such a cliche, but it is, it's vital relationship. You don't understand, it's like every breath you take. Every breath you take is a gift from God. Every breath you take is a gift from God and until you realize the importance of your relationship with him. You can't do anything. Amen. We can't even breathe without him. And until you get to that point where, God, I need you more than anything. It's not, I need to go to the store, I need to go... You know, I, I need a vacation, or I need a couple of days break here and there, or I need to go buy something to make me feel better. And it's you got to get before God and say, God, I need you more than anything, because without you, I am nothing, and I have nothing without you. Everything that was made was made by Him. All good things come from Him. He is the the epitome of goodness. It's like. When you want it, when you're reading the scriptures and the love and the goodness comes out of the pages as a as a person, receive it and keep it. Take hold of it. It's something like when he's increasing your faith, it's 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 remaining open, that that hope door stays open. The package that's sitting on the front porch that was delivered was faith. And faith, it takes action. It's constantly flowing. It's an action. Love is like the attitude and faith is the action to it. And that's how we should live all of our Christian walk. I share, I got a chance to share. I <laughs> see there's a difference between I have to. And, I, and I'm excited to. Yeah? It takes, it takes, it's a big difference. You can't walk the Christian walk by yourself. But if you want to, oh my gosh, is life a different, 
it's the different story. I got a chance, going back to this, I got a chance to, we, we had um, to trade in our vehicle because we were getting some high mileage on it and I wanted to trade it over so I can start over. And in the process, <clears throat> I was able to, to share uh, a little bit of my testimony with the, with the finance manager that was doing the, doing the paperwork after I told him, no, I don't want anything extra. <laughs> and he was really ticked off. <laughs> but <clears throat> but in, even in the process, I mean, he softened. And it was like one of those things where he was like the, the epitome of a certain particular stereotype of the people that are out there right now in the world, and they don't know Jesus. And so I, he's like, so he, <laughs> he opened the door, he let me in, he just... He's like, so what, what is it about being a pastor that, that, is, that you like? Oh. And then he said, he asked me a couple of other things. And I, and I was just like, well, I'll tell you what, this is what it means to me. And this is what Jesus did for me. And I gave him part of my testimony. And he was blown out of the water. And actually, for the first time, he wasn't actually talking too much. He was just, <laughs> wow, you know. And he was a, he was a talker. So I kind of blew him out of the water with some stuff, which if anybody heard my testimony, it's pretty well out there anyway. But I didn't kill him with all the gory details of stuff. But um, I just basically wanted to sh share with him what Jesus did for me and how he loved me out of those, that situation. So he's like, well, since the, the, the beginning of the conversation was, don't expect too good of a, a financing because since the the new administration came into office all the all the the rates are really high now like, okay um and i said okay whatever it, I'm, I'm good with it and uh so he quoted me a particular rate and i was like hmm that is that's definitely higher than what i had and i said you know if that's if that's all you can do why don't you know why don't you try who i have it already through my my old car through and he did right away and it, and it and went down 0.3, which was pretty good. And then in two days, I got a letter in the mail saying, this is after everything's transpired. It was like two days later, three days later. Oh, we made a mistake. It's even it's even 0.5% less than what you had originally. So it was almost an entire percentage off by the time I was done. And I don't, I, I'm not saying that, it, that that was in direct correlation to my sharing the message of Christ with him. But I, I'm definitely giving God the glory for it, because I mean it took it took off a chunk of, of my monthly payment. And hey, I got a chance to share some of my testimony with somebody that didn't know the Lord at all. Raise, I, I just want I want I want to see a show of hands. How many of you have ever been approached by someone and shared the love of Jesus with? you know, with you, why, in all, before and after you were saved, how many people have ever come up to you and witnessed to you? Show of hands, just how many? Okay. The, the question was, is how many of you have ever been witnessed to? Okay. That's a pretty good amount. We got almost half half the church. You know, there's some people that had lived like I my my entire life. I'm 43 now or 42. I can't remember. <laughs> also, as an old age, I can't remember these. Um, I could be 29. I was 39 for two years in a row. It was an accident. I forgot. I just forgot. They made me a cake and everything, and I had 39. Um, I was in really bad shape. I, I, I blame that all on the medications and different things I had to come, <laughs> come off of. No. Um, some people have gone their entire lives, like myself, 43 years. I've never been witness to one time in my life. There, there, there's people, like even in, in this congregation, that have never been witness to. And, and they have, you know, for many, many years. This isn't, that's, not, that's not cool. And the one thing that, that um, I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not like, in a, I don't have an evangelistic push, but a, as a believer, we're all kind of called to be somewhat evangel evangelistic in our, 
and our output, yeah? All of us. How can we not, how can we be quiet when we know the person next to us is going to hell? I'm not saying go over to him and say, hey, you're going to hell. But what I am saying is that God so loved the world that he gave his only son and he died for them. He paid a huge price for somebody that you're going to just walk by and ignore. We can't do this. We can't. We shouldn't. Yeah? All of us have a part, and we need each other, but he needs us desperately. He needs us to be able to play that part. He needs us to be able to sh be shown through at whatever f capacity we are in, whether we live out in the country or we live in the middle of the city. You have, a, you have opportunity, and I'm not trying to make you feel guilty for not, you know, telling people about Jesus, but in... We should. We should, be, we should be feeling something. We should be excited to share what, what, the, what the Lord's done in our life. I'm excited because I have been through so much and that he's taken me out of so much that it's like, uh, if I have an opportunity, if somebody opens the door, I'm not going to beat them over the head with, with, some, with the Bible. But if I have a, an opportunity and the Lord is, is really, you could, I could feel the presence of the Lord. Another reason why you want to know the presence of the Lord you want to be able to walk in his will. You know when you're walking out of his will. People, like, like Vicky was saying, there's so much about uh, destiny and purpose. It's real simple. It's Jesus. If you know him, if you strive to know him, if, you, if that is your, your only goal as a believer is to know and to be known by him as a son, a daughter. We're called to be kings and priests. Are we walking it? Are we, are we even giving it the opportunity to grow in us? Are we, are we walking that, 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 that walk or, or fighting that fight, so to speak? I just want to encourage you because especially during this time when people, I don't want anybody to miss what God's doing right now and what God is going to do. And if, if it takes a lot of me to be dealt with so that I could process this stuff and give it to you guys, so be it. It takes, it takes a lot. It takes, it takes a lot of, it's not effort. It takes a lot of dying. It takes a lot of, of removal of self, you know. <laughs> and even to, even to stand up here this morning and be able to share with you guys, I struggled all week. We haven't slept maybe four hours a night for weeks, and, and I'm like, I lose my train of thought real easily. There's just different things. And I said, you know, Lord, if, if anything comes out of me, let it be something that they need to hear. Let it be you, because I can't remember. I wouldn't even be up here if I didn't think that the Lord wanted to, you guys to hear something. And I hope that something has hit you and hit your heart today and that you were able to grab the Jesus out of this because faith is a substance. It's already there. It's built, it's, it's in all of us, but we need it to grow. We need it to be healed. Help us, Lord, with our unbelief. Is it Matthew or Mark 9.23? I believe, but let help my unbelief. And then Paul writes in Thessalonians, he says, you know, that we might help you in your lack of faith. It made that, that we might help. And I know that so that we have, we have the ability, and that's why it was so important for us to, to, to have some of the, the testimonies that are what's going on right now. Because the church needs to stir itself up. Those testimonies are for the building up of the saints. And if we never talk about them, and we only share with one or two people, the rest of us get left out. We don't want that. We don't need that anymore. So if anybody, I mean, if anybody has testimony, if anybody is actually excited to read their scriptures, if anybody is getting up in the morning and, and, and want, God, I want scripture. I want you to show me something. Then tell us. Tell people. Because that's, that's the general consensus of what's going on right now. It's a deeper relationship with me. 
says the Lord. Not me. My relationship with me isn't very good. <laughs> My relationship with me is totally getting out of the way. Psalm 34, I love that. I just love this. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, all you saints. There is no want to those who fear him. You could spend hours on that scripture. You could spend days, you, you could make that and meditate on that so that it is so in your heart that you never doubt one of the letters that are in that scripture. Because it's a, it's, a, it's a living, breathing part of what God wants for us. It is him. It's, it's so awesome that, 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 that we can know the author of the scripture and believe it word for word. We don't have to change it based on what we, 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 our experience was or what somebody told us. Anytime that we think or, or feel or do anything that's contrary to the word of God, and then we justify it, is, is completely sin. When we go back to I know what, what the Lord was dealing with me with, with, with doubt and grieving, grieving him and grieving the Holy Spirit. I want that to be able to be one of those things that you guys pick up. There's such a sensitivity for, that's being released as far as to, to, his, to his will and to his ways. That if we know him, we know the Father, we know His will, and we can continually walk in it. We don't have to worry about purpose and destiny because we will be walking in what He has purposed and destined, had for our destiny. Our focus wasn't, wrong, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't bad, it was wrong. It, wasn't, it was off. It wasn't just off, it was, you know, it could be a good thing that we would, you know, we were expecting or that we wanted that God was going to show us and that our, our, you know, bring us to a great and wonderful, awesome ministry where we have millions of people at our, in a, you know, in a huge, humongous stadium or something like that, that we would be able to have so many changed lives that we wouldn't even be able to, to, to count. Those are good things to, to, you know, but we really want, we really should go back and want what God wants. Lord, you show me. I don't want to. I don't want to do anything without you because if I do, and if I do have an entire stadium full of people, I'm going to wreck and fall without you. I don't want to go anywhere that He doesn't go. I don't want to say anything that He doesn't want me to say. I don't want to go do. I don't want to do anything without Him. So many times that we, we it's it's so scary how we can how we can just put duct tape practically over the Holy Spirit's mouth and move on without, with, with, with a seared conscience. That still small voice sometimes is really hard to hear and very, very easy to ignore. That is scary, and it should be scary to you. Lord, I repent forever doing that, justifying myself and walking away from you. I thank you, Father, for your forgiveness, for your love, for your goodness that we don't deserve. <laughs> and I gladly lay my life down for these people. 
I gladly let myself be open and poured out for your people, Father. I just ask, Lord, that you would be with them this week, that you would be with them like they've never known, that you, your spirit would grow strong within them, that that desire would be stirred, and the faith that you've already placed in them would grow as they exercise that faith in belief in your word, your living word, with the knowledge of you, a better, deeper knowledge of you as you continually unfold those, those things about you that you wish us to know. Lord, as you shine the spotlight on the darkest places in our hearts. Lord, give us the grace to be able to, to take care of all of those things. Lay them at your feet so that your light would shine even further, so that we would know your depth, so that we would know your height and width, so that we would know your love deeper that you have for us. that your spirit of holiness would be upon us. I thank you for your strength and your wisdom, Father, and everything that you poured out for us. Help us to be a willing vessel to carry your light to a lost and dying world. This generation needs this generation needs you so badly. It's time for us to wake up. To wake up. Thank you, Father. Let's pray, let's stand together and let's just pray for uh, to be stirred up in the spirit for more God. And something that's grieved me recently that I've seen is I've seen knowing what's going on in my heart, knowing what's going on in Jennifer, knowing what's going on in, J in Jason, his love for the church, his love for people, strangers, but particularly the household of faith. And I think of how many feel like they've got a great life with God, don't even go to church. How, I'm going to say, how can you say you love God, and but there's these people I don't need? You know, if, if, if it's, that's not even obvious to so many people, we need to pray, right? Pray God push away the darkness from around them, because God loves those people. They mean well, but in all honesty, they're deceived. They've probably been hurt in church or what have you. Um, most Christians have been hurt more in church than they've been hurt in the world, <laughs> right? So, Father, we just release forgiveness to them right now. We release those people in the church that have hurt us in times past, that if in any way it's, it's causing us to grieve Jesus and the Jesus that's in them, and we can't see past the wrongdoing, we can't see the gold, then, Father, forgive us. We receive forgiveness. Stir up in our hearts that, that we participate in, the, in everything that you want to do in us and through us in the days ahead. Father, cleanse us even. What the Lord was speaking to me while Jason was talking uh, was we confuse things with him. Love is not a thing. It's him. Life is it's not a thing. Light is not a thing. He is the light of the world. It's Him. It's not a thing. If you put your faith in a thing, you're going to crash. But you put your faith in Him and you'll never be disappointed. So Father, right now, stir up, create a desire, hunger and thirst. Train up a child in a way he shall go and when he grows old he shall not depart. Well, I feel like the church is still a child in many regards, all of us. There's some childish behavior in us. Let's put away childish things. 
And one way to do that is, is, is basically to just cleanse ourselves from the, from the things that stand in the way of walking a forgiveness lifestyle. I receive forgiveness for my temper tantrums. I receive forgiveness for not resolving issues quickly. I, I really believe that it's like almost like the rebuke in Hebrews. By this time you should be teachers. How many of you, by the reason of time, should be teachers, and yet, and yet it's still all about you? if not taking the responsibility to truly be teachers by now. So Father, we just receive forgiveness and we take any rebuke that comes from a loving God. I'll take any rebuke when all the love of heaven is behind His correction. He's preparing a people for the days ahead. And it's going to be marked first with a holiness. And that holiness is going to require us to do, to allow Him to search us and reveal to us those things that need to be laid down, put aside. But He is not life and love and faith. That's not a thing. It's a person. So Father, we just receive forgiveness for grieving You in any way. And right now we're just going to, we pray that if there's a way to do it in the Spirit, I believe that what we want to do is train up a child in the way he should go, and when he grows old he shall not depart. Train means to tease or create a desire. Holy Spirit, you and you alone can stimulate through those where the desire has been increased. Increase a desire in the hearts of for whosoever willing. If you say, but I'm, I'm kind of dry, then say, God, help me come out of this dryness. Help me create a desire in me for that which is natural, to hunger and thirst after you in the days ahead. I don't want to miss anything. I want to be a participant of what God is doing. But we've got a long ways to go, and only the Holy Spirit can do it. So, Father, the more we surrender and the more we get out of the way, the greater the opportunity for Him to let God arise and the enemies be scattered. Walk in a new level of victory. In Jesus' name, amen. You've been listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark of Full Stature Ministries at Forgive123.com. Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protections under applicable law. Our copyright policy is available at our website, forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, please visit forgive123.com. Did you know that we have an online school available? Hi, I'm Pastor Jason Clark. We invite you to join our international community of almost a thousand students currently enrolled in a school like no other. Team Embassy equips believers to live in the Spirit by giving them the how-to tools for wholeness, intimacy with God, and living the abundant life Jesus promised us. You will learn how to heal emotional pain quickly and completely. You'll discover amazing keys to tap into the fruit of the Spirit and practice the presence of God as a lifestyle. Exciting courses available include the 60-day challenge, self-deliverance, healing rejection, codependency, intimate prayer, the functions of the human spirit, and many, many more. It's formatted so that you could take it with you on all your mobile devices. Sign up today at training.teamembassy.com. Be transformed. Become all God created you to be. You will never be the same.